To begin with, we need some chunks. For easier demonstration, we will just start with a box that's Voronoi fractured. The effect is done with a rigid body solver, so we need to pack the chunks with an assemble node. Before we jump into coding the behavior in VEX, we need a sphere to make the chunks move in the line tool. So let's drop down the sphere node, clip it in half two times and move it where we want the sphere to form. You would think that we now scatter points on the sphere to make our chunks move to. Well, almost. If we did that, we would probably end up with a huge mess where chunks would fly all around to reach the target position. So to control where each chunk flies to, we just need their centroid and map it as a point to our sphere. There are multiple ways to do that, but for me a combination of directional ray and point relax for even distribution did the trick. We also want a logical connection between chunk and target point. We already got the name attribute, but let's keep it clean and use a separate ID attribute called add point ID. Now each chunk has a point on the sphere it belongs to, so we can precisely control where each chunk goes. So let's make those chunks fly. Sure, we could just update the position each frame, but we want to have everything dynamic and react to collisions, forces, etc. So we should work with velocity instead. All you need to do is set the velocity as the vector between its own position and the target position. Done! They even slow down now, because the vector's magnitude gets smaller and smaller the closer they get, so that's cool. The only problem is that we're setting the velocity and therefore overriding it each frame. The solution is to blend between the existing velocity and the one that makes chunks reach the target and control that using a distance attribute. By doing so, we can have them move more and more freely the closer they get to the goal. The further away they are, the more they want to move to their target. Cool, so we finally got them where we want, but they spin like crazy and the sphere looks a bit spiky. Let's align each piece so that the flat surface of each chunk points outwards. We can make use of the sphere's normals, so let's define them on the sphere and transfer them to the points. The VEX code may look scary at first, but it basically uses the orient quaternion, translates it into a vector and uses the rotational velocity w to make a piece spin towards a goal. So basically the same concept as before, but this time with rotation instead of translation. In this case though, the controlling attribute is not really a distance between points, but the dot product of the current orientation vector and the goal vector. Just fit the dot product from minus one and one to zero and one, and there you have it, a normalized representation between no alignment and full alignment. Awesome, now we have everything we need. The chunks move to the target and orient themselves based on their spheres normals. And everything is dynamic too, so we can drop a giant flippy and the shield catches it nicely. Bonus tip, you can have the target points be animated too. For example with a noise, so the chunks breathe a little and it makes it feel a bit more alive and magical. Now I challenge you at home to figure out the effect where the chunks move towards incoming fire, like the rocks. Basically it can be done with everything I showed this far. Getting positions, calculating distances, and updating the velocity to make chunks move towards a goal. Let me know in the comments if you could figure it out. When the system is working, you can try to build a complete environment, fracture real geometry and then apply the system to that. Add a character, and excuse my poor acting skills here, some secondary simulations for gravel and dust, render and composite. Enjoy!